Ever watch kids play with weebles? It's really something. Hey, hey, look at me and weeble. Me and weeble go all around. One day, kids pretend they're flying into Weeble Airport. Next day, they play around the Weeble Cottage. Or if it's real nice, they go out to the Weeble Marina and go fishing. Hey, hey, look at me and Weeble. The Weebles waddle, but they don't fall down. Romper Room makes Weeble toys. Back in 1971, Romper Room introduced the world to Weeble Wobbles. And every child of the 70s not only had a Weeble Wobble, they could probably still tell you that Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. There were Weeble families, a tree house, a haunted house, a fun house, a western set, a circus, a cruise ship, a camper, Mickey Mouse, Pooh, Tigger. There were all of these little guys lining the aisles of Woolworths and Sears and Toys R Us and other department stores. Over the past few years, I've been lucky enough to find some online, and I've been given some as gifts. And this is one of the over 30 that I have displayed in our home right now. As a matter of fact, the license plate on my car even says Weeble as a tribute to these little guys. You see, these little guys not only remind me of my childhood, they also have a much deeper meaning. And while I loved these guys when I was a child, now they serve as a reminder of a deeper truth. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, the Apostle Paul writes, We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. The Jeremy Houck version says we weeble and we wobble, but we don't fall down. I love the nitty-gritty realism of this passage. Are we under pressure? Yes. Do we get confused sometimes? Yes. Do we face harsh criticism? Of course. Are we knocked down? Sometimes. Paul does a great job describing real life, but we also know that the level that we face these problems varies. We're not always drowning under the pressure, but there are times that we feel like we're going to be crushed under the weight of it all. Nobody is exempt from these feelings, and for most of us, over the past few days, as you've contemplated what it means to be locked down, you've probably felt the despair that comes from not knowing when this is all going to be over. It helps me to remember that when I gave my life to Christ, when I gave it back to Him, nobody offered me a life free from struggles and problems. It doesn't work that way. Far too many people want to come to Christ in the same way that you would get on the Haunted Mansion ride at Six Flags. Um, you, you expect to get in that little boat and you're going to float by all these scary monsters who act like they're going to come get you, but you know the whole time they're never going to get close enough you, to you to rock the boat. So you have a thrill ride and you're never in any real danger. The truth is, there are going to be times when life is hard. Sometimes you're going to go through an epidemic and you have to be locked in your home for 30 days with people that you love but frustrate you. That's why Paul reminds us that as long as we're living on this broken planet, there are going to be times when we face trouble. There are going to be times when we feel pressure or times when we get knocked down by life. And Paul also takes the time to remind us that those are the times when the power of Christ shows up to help us. We experience real victory. We discover that it's not victory from trouble, but victory through trouble. I mean, we don't get to choose our troubles. It's not like I can say, hey, I like some light tribulation, but hold off on the persecution. And if you don't mind, I just want to skip that whole part about being knocked down. Life isn't a cafeteria where we get to pick what happens to us. Life decides what comes our way. Yet, it's through God's grace that even though we're knocked down, we're never knocked out. And so tonight, when we pray, I want to caution you to avoid that joy killer that says, once I get past this promise, then, and only then, will I be able to enjoy my life. But as long as I'm here, I'm going to be unhappy and miserable. Far too many Christians live their entire lives looking for that magical time when they're free from troubles and discomfort, they refuse to find the strength that comes from the joy of the Lord. They're content to be bitter brothers and sour sisters. Instead, I want us to pray that the Holy Spirit will move in our hearts and our minds so that we can discover the real joy of living in the middle of this mess. 
I want to find joy in being able to spend time with our family and our loved ones. I want us to find joy in the fact that the world has slowed to the point where we can finally simplify. I want to find joy in the fact that we get to discover and define our true limits. Because one day this is all going to be over and we're going to get to go back to normal. So let's find joy in the fact that we have the time now to reprioritize our life and figure out what normal we want to get back to. Right now you're weebling and you're wobbling. But thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit, and the amazing grace given to us through the Son. We're not going to fall down. So let's pray together. And then let's find people in our homes and let's pray with them. Let's pray with our kids, our husbands, our wives. And maybe let's just call somebody tonight that you love, that you go to church with here. And it'd probably be a little weird at first, but why don't you offer to pray with them over the phone? I believe that God moves when His people pray. Will you join me in prayer? Father, I want to thank You for for giving us strength, for being there with us, for not uh, taking the troubles away from us, but for being present with us in the midst of these troubles, for walking with us as we go through all of this change in our lives. Lord, I pray that as we endure uh, all of the confusion and all the fear, Father, when all of that comes at us, Lord, I pray that we will feel the Spirit moving in our lives more than we ever have before. I pray that you'll be glorified, that you'll be lifted up in our lives, that we will truly love one another and care for one another and realize and remind each other that you are always present, always near, always forgiving and merciful and loving. And Father, we pray this prayer through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Church family, I love you. I'm so glad that we are still having the opportunity to pray with and to pray for one another. Please don't forget that God created you to be a weeble. You're going to weeble and you're going to wobble. But thanks be to God, we'll never fall down. Hope you have a great night and I look forward to hearing and seeing you soon. God bless.